Hey guys, welcome back. It's Maver here today with another episode of 86. And yes, my apologies, this episode was delayed. Uh, I actually had a bad case of the stomach flu on Saturday, carried all over to Sunday. And um, well, my philosophy on these things is always that uh, I will continue, you know, my normal schedule as usual, as to not cause a domino effect, right, where everything gets just pushed one day after. So that's why this episode was delayed to right now. But as I always say, better late than never. And um, and by the way, I am fine guys so no worries it's not covid or anything just um i guess some unfortunate circumstances right but anyways putting that aside back to 86 uh i do believe well actually i don't know right i've been saying that we're about to enter into like a huge battle for the past two or three episodes now but apparently it hasn't happened yet right so they might still be building up to this uh do building up to this huge uh, assault right by the legion which of course everybody is hinting at um and obviously we're in another situation where our protagonist knows that something bad is about to happen but those around you know the the um the federacy as they're called now don't really believe in it until it's too late or something of that right um and then i presume we will get some sort of heroic rise of shin and the and his companions how um they they fought against the and managed to turn back the tide, right? But is that so? Or is that true or not? Is that going to happen in this episode? Are we going to start in this episode? Well, let's just find out together, shall we? And get right into it. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. Well, certainly seems calm for now, right? Oh, actually, I think we are beginning. Wait, what? Okay, a full out assault on all nations. Damn. And that's not my, and that's not even my uh, most, uh, <laughs> the most surprising thing. The most surprising thing is probably that, you know, their commands are being received in human voices, right? Though I presume to a certain extent maybe it's to allow us to understand. Who knows? I mean, don't get me wrong, we already know that their commanders are like former humans, right? Their heads are chopped off put into it to augment the legion so that they can learn and evolve, you know, sort of like the Borg or whatnot. But still, you wouldn't expect them to be giving out instructions uh, in human language. But damn. And this is only like one network? Yeah, because judging by the dialogue that we heard just there, this is only, even though they're launching a, a, a full-on assault on four nations at once, this is only like one cell, if you will. Like, a certain portion of their forces. It's not even a full, full, you know, all-out assault. At least that's what I'm getting from the, uh, from that dialogue there. It seems to imply that there are other networks, right? I presume an all-out assault would have a different tone to the entire thing.
I wonder why the Legion does things like this, though. You would think, especially, you know, with their own intelligence and also borrowing. Uh, as I was saying before, Shin went around and <laughs> woke everybody up. I was saying, uh, you would think the Legion would would also know to like concentrate their forces and try to attack one nation first. I don't know. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more in regards to that. Using trench warfare, rarely. Seriously, they're using like. Yeah, well, actually, let me take a look. I was gonna say that their weaponry seems a little bit antique compared to everything. Weapons that they're using and whatnot seem more modern. And armor. Nordlik to the rescue. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And I'm actually surprised that it's city combat as well. Long range artillery. Although, I guess to a certain extent, that's like a sniper, eh? <laughs> Galloping, really? <laughs> uh. I mean, certainly it's better for them to fight in an urban environment, right? 
Guerrilla warfare tactics work better that way. You need some sort of cover. And obstruction of vision. So, Nord Lick isn't only those five, eh? Judging from that, it seems that there's many more as well. No, but seriously, what's with their recon? Like, if there's like a huge force like this right outside your front door, shouldn't you be able to detect at least that much? Nice. Again, I'm wondering, this this should be because of her bloodline, right? Now, my uh, suspicions, at least, or my theory, is that because the Legion were created by the Imperial family. They must have some special connection to the Legion as well. That's how I feel, anyways. on the battlefield. Huh? 
Was he somehow corrupted by the Legion the last time they... They fought? Oh, that is pretty though. Nice. Right as the sun comes up, eh? Oh, that's the end? It's so hard to know if it's actually just a, you know, a Shin problem by himself, like this is all he knows and whatnot. Or is it because there's something special in regards to him and the Legion? So the other free nations, how are they doing? Nope, oh, a republic, eh? Hey, it's been a while. Now this is at the same time, right? This is happening at the same time as what Shin and as what Shin and the others were doing. Get this. What is this generous trying to do?
So does the general actually want to destroy the Republic? I don't... So I guess the general tried before as well, right? Where he simply got too pessimistic about the entire situation. But I still wish they would have given like a better explanation of the the current power structure of the Republic, though. Like, if nothing else, they need to... F All right, she's taking full control of the battlefield now. That was epic. Again, I love it. I love it, alright? But, ugh! I do wish they kind of had, like, a better build-up to, to that part. Alright, see you guys after this. Oh, actually, it seems that there's a little bit more after the end. Let's watch this together in 3, 2, 1, play. Ooh, direct attack on their HQ, damn. Okay, that is interesting. Well, see you guys after this. All right, okay, so they had to throw a little bit of twist at the very end there, right? Uh, I kind of wish that they just ended on uh, on Lena's like epic speech there at the end, but um, oh well, I mean, it, it gives us something to think about, right? So I actually went back and checked the, the, the timing and the calendars and, and all that, so as expected, it is actually quite important. There's a reason why they you know, state the date every time when there's an important scene change or anything. That's probably something that you need to keep track of, right? So apparently the situation in um, that's happening in uh, the, Re the Republic right now happened three days before their, the actual attack in regards to Shin and the others, right? So it's actually... Um, so that's why at the very end of the episode here, uh, when Federica was talking about, you know, what she saw, her visions and whatnot, that's why she said on that day, um, you know, Kiri led a legion to attack the Republic, right? Because she's talking about things in the past tense. That was an attack 
three days ago. So whether or not uh, whether or not Lena was able to successfully repel them, well, I think the answer is still obviously yes, right? Otherwise, you know, she is one of the main characters after all. Uh, and I highly doubt that the Republic would just fall just like that, right? Um, but you know, we will know. Uh, this this series has certainly surprised me up to this point in a lot of ways that it does things. So uh, who knows? It, it could actually happen, right? Now. Um, so I guess this episode we can divide it first into two parts as well. One is the, um, one is on Shin's side and whatnot, and then the second half, or, you know, the latter portion would be Lena's portion. So, in regards to Shin half, I don't really have too much to, to add there. I mean, obviously it went pretty much as expected, um, I did fought the, uh, I did fought the the concept of the normal soldiers fighting on the front lines and within trenches. That was pretty interesting, and that's a side that we haven't seen up to this point, right? Up to this point, we've seen mostly uh, soldiers fighting within those same uh, mechas as well, right? Those um, um, both sides call them different things, but but whatever. Uh, and you know, maybe some various personnel, some some foot soldiers, um, that we mostly see them in an urban environment, right? We haven't really seen that much of open field uh, field battles where uh, it's not the mechs going up against Legion, but actually you know just human flesh, right? So I thought that was a pretty interesting scene there, and it seemed really archaic in a way, right? You would think that, you know, at this day and age, um, especially considering, you know, what they're up against and whatnot, they would not resort to using this kind of warfare, right? Uh, I definitely feel that it's not you know, in the face of precision weapons like like the Legion do have, I don't really think trench warfare is an adequate defense to everything here. But maybe there are some more things that are not explained, uh, maybe some exposition and whatnot that, that would explain this a little bit further as to why the Federacy is still utilizing this kind of tactics and strategy, right? But in any case, well, you know, the, the 86, of course, the Nordlix squadron managed to fight them off. It seems that there's actually much more uh, to the squadron, not just only the five 86 that came here from the Republic, but also many others as well. Um, sad that we didn't really get to see too much of that, but I mean, I think it's safe to say that they're, they are an elite fighting force and they managed to hold off like an entire front by themselves, right? Uh, as for Shin going kind of sort of berserk there, again, I'm it's... I'm currently not not made up in my mind whether or not that is a situation where it's just a an extension of the upbringing that that Shin had, right? Um, the fact that he has been on the battlefield for so long, the fact that he's lost so much on the battlefield that he's um he's he's only known the battlefield, right? Is it purely you know more of a personal psychological problem on on his end, um, and um, you know something like that, or or is it actually an extension of maybe his bloodline as well, right? Um, we we've known that he was part of the um, he was part of the family that had experiments done on them right something related to the parade and and all that um, and and we certainly know that Shin himself has a little bit of a um, some special abilities right some special powers that are not quite like uh, other humans right so it could be an extension of that as well right um, and and heck I guess there is a third well I guess the second thing would also maybe uh, make him the target of, of some sort of corruption as well, right? Don't forget that, after all, uh, near the, um, you know, at the end of the first half of the season, right, uh, we do see him get into uh, nearly, um, you know, a nearly death situation, a near death situation here. In fact, it's still not entirely clear how exactly he survived the whole experience, right? Beyond his, um, I guess, his sort of uh, meeting up with his brother and, and whatnot, but could it also possibly be that in, during that situation, uh, maybe his mind also got kind of sort of corrupted somehow, right? Such as uh, sort of like a long-term time bomb uh, set by the Legion, if they are that, you know, if they are actually that smart and all that. Hard to say, hard to say. Uh, I guess technically I would, I would be much more inclined to believe that this is just some sort of uh, tendency of people of Shin's bloodline in, in, a, in a certain sense, right? His sort of um, connection to these paranormal things, such a parade and whatnot. Maybe this is also in some way connected with the Legion and, and you know, the technology or the, should I say technology? Or the powers underlying uh, how, how they are so strong and, you know, a lot of the more supernatural kind of stuff that we see going on here. So that is certainly... Um, one part of, of everything here. Although, with that in mind, it, I do find it, uh, it is interesting to think about, though, like, um, whether or not it's also a situation where within the, uh, the former 
Empire, right, the current Federacy, and also within the Republic, whether there are actually two bloodlines that each have their own respective abilities, right? So maybe, you know, one is blue eyes, one is red eyes, something of that sort. Don't really know, but, but and it is kind of interesting to think about, right? But, you know, putting that aside, though, I'm actually much more interested in the Republic situation right now because actually to me, right, that that is um, my focal point um, in, I don't know, to, to me, it's it's much more of an interesting kind of setup, right, where we have Lena here trying to do her best to, to um, you know, she's basically fighting two fronts at the same time, right? She needs to fight against the Legion, but then she actually also has to fight against her own people as well um, in, in order to to uh, sort of also be kind of like staging a revolution and an uprising from the Republic within in order to gain the necessary resources that she, that she can get, gain the necessary support and whatnot in order to um, eventually, you know, culminate into this situation that we see now. I'm kind of disappointed, actually, that we didn't, we didn't get to see more more of how she managed to reach this point, including all the work that she, she put into it. That's one thing. And the second thing is actually also, um, I'm still quite curious about the entire Republic situation. Um, and, and for instance, a general, like what exactly is he trying to do and, and all that, right? Because I don't know, it just seems kind of weird to me, right? Like I can get if if you don't uh, want to, like maybe still carrying on to, to their pride and, and whatnot, that they don't want to rely on the 86, maybe they, they want to, but you, you need to have some sort of alternative, right? But the general, the way that he was talking, he was basically suggesting that they just sit there and die. So I don't, I don't really get what, what that is. And certainly the general is just one person, right? Uh, there's certainly many others who would know that, hey, there's a large scale legion legion uh, incoming and attacking. So they still got to fend off somehow, right? Um, I was actually expecting more of um, maybe some more inhumane proposals to be made, right? And then we would have this kind of conflict in this situation here where the general would be trying to uh, to uphold Elena's wishes, where she's going to take control of the battlefield. You know, there, there should have been an alternative, right? There should have been an alternative the way that the Republic higher-ups wanted to do things, like, I don't know, maybe send the 86 to their deaths or whatnot, use them as, as meat shields to buy as much time as possible, and then, I don't know, like, if they have some sort of super weapon, like nukes or anything, um, maybe not nukes, but, but something similar to that right uh, i guess lena mentioned something about a railgun before maybe something like that and i don't know maybe use it as a um as a uh you know um a a no like um you know just firing it uh with with disregard to to friendly fire and whatnot right basically a situation where you know if we send out the 86 to entangle with the legions and hold them up long enough you know, get them where we want them and then you know destroy all of them in one blow and let the 86 sacrifice themselves along with the legion right i was expecting at least for the republic side um you know the non-lena side to have some sort of uh contingency plan or at least some kind of reactive plan uh in in regards to this full scale full scale attack right that would make much more sense in this context where then the general would be like all right fine i'll 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 try to um i'll try to allow lena you to do things your way let me hold up the rest of them and that would make more sense with him seeing the the weapon on his shoulder because obviously it seems that he's going to because all the other soldiers and officers are gathered up right it seems that the general himself he wants to hold them there to to um not allow them to interfere with lena but in order for that to actually happen they needed to have actually a plan to to uh, interfere in the first place, right? That's that's what I'm talking about. So, um, I don't think that part of the story was really well explained to us. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm 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 definitely glad that Lena is taking the battlefield, and she's an absolute badass here, right? She's basically the the supreme commander at this point, right? She's taking hold of all of the combat personnel here, and I mean heck the the only real people who were fighting on the front lines are the 86 anyway so taking control of all the 86 essentially means that she is the total commander here um and um since she has her allies within the uh within hq as well um you know she's essentially in charge of the entire uh, all of the republic's forces at this point right or at least on that side of the theater um on on that war theater so in that sense um you know, total badass, um, really want to see, you know, what kind of plans that she has in store. Um, I highly doubt it's just going to be a, okay, try to send the 86 out to buy as much time as possible, right? It can't be as simple as that. There has to be, like, some sort of, of weaponry or maybe some sort of trap, some sort of plan that she has in mind in order to uh, face off against this full-on assault, which she actually has known about 
and she has known was going to come for a long time already, right? So I don't know. Maybe we're going to go things. We're we're going to look at things in a sort of like a a flashback fashion, right? Where we see that、uh, she is under this kind of situation right now, but then we maybe in the next episode we we do some flashbacks into like a week or a month before, and then we go through you know we follow through Lena's path once again and everything that she's tried to accomplish up to this point,、um, so that she can survive this.、Uh, This conflict, this battle, and、um, potentially in the future,、uh, in the future, meet up with Shin and the others once again, right?、Um, after they drive the entirety of the Legion back,、um, so hopefully, hopefully, we will get that sometime in the future. Because otherwise, I feel like it's just wasted potential, to be honest.、Um, and I guess some, some. Uh, another thing I I already mentioned this in the episode, but from the way the Legion were hoarding things, I kind of get the feeling that even though this is a full out assault, it's still like one one portion of the totality of the Legion's forces, right? So even if they do manage to beat these、uh, forces back, they manage to destroy this particular、uh, this particular attack and whatnot. That's not going to mean the end of the Legion, right? It's it's not it's far from it. It's not even going to mean a counterattack. There's probably many more Legion forces waiting as well, right?、And、they had this concept of、um, all right the the who was he called? I think No Face. No Face was the name, right? The commander of the Legion forces.、Um, he he was basically saying all the Legion forces on this network, right? Now saying this network would imply that there's Other networks as well,、um, which are presumably commanded by other officers as well, right? So you can consider this as like、uh, one of the armies of the Legion、uh, heading out to do this kind of、uh, full-out assault.、Um, and in that case, well,、uh, I mean, it's not hard to imagine that, right? So that way, you know, we do get this this long raging war. You know, you think that you you've gained some victories, but in reality, there's much more、um, uh, despair. And and whatnot, waiting for you behind because there's many many more forces. You only manage to destroy a portion of it, and you know things of that nature, right?、Um, and also beyond that, once again, I'm still quite puzzled as to why the Legion would actually choose this kind of strategy, where they attacked all four all four nations at the same time, right? Again, I feel like it would be much more prudent to、uh, maybe just focus all of the Legion's forces on attacking one nation f- first, and then you know managing to to、uh, managing to wipe it out, and then heading out towards another kingdom, rather than dividing the forces into four different parts and then striking them simultaneously, right? Because certainly it seems that the nations themselves aren't mounting any counterattacks, right? So if they are going to turtle up and just wait, why not use that as a、uh, You know why not use that opportunity to to really concentrate all your forces into one point and break it, right? So I'm highly curious as to what is the Legion's reasoning for that as well, or was that actually a deliberate move, maybe、um, for those、uh, so-called commanders of the Legion, whether or not they still have some sort of conscience, and、um, this is actually them helping the humans in some sort of weird way. I don't know. That's just my guess, but. You know, for for fighting machines and whatnot, for for、uh, for an AI that's really supposed to、uh, find a way to to do to battle and to wear down your enemy and whatnot, it's certainly not fighting very、uh, smartly, right? So much for being you know a war machine and whatnot.、Uh, but yeah. Anyways,、uh, I think I've been rambling on a little bit too long.、Uh, again, my apologies for the late episode for this week. Um, hopefully next week's you know this Saturday will will come out in、um, in time on this Saturday. It should actually, un- unless something else arises. But、um, in any case, thank you guys, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.